Okay, welcome to the PT Academic Mini Mock Test by e2language.com. What's the plan? The plan is this. We're going to do one question from each PT task, including write essay. So in total, we're going to do all 20 PT tasks. The level of difficulty is going to be the same as the actual PTE. So this is a good experience of what it's like on test day. I'm going to show you the answers at the end. So we'll do the, every question, then we'll go through every answer. And I'll also do a Q&A at the end if you want to hang around. Let's get straight to it. Let's start with PTE speaking. And we'll start with read aloud. I'm going to disappear. Let me just quickly explain what you have to do. You're going to see a paragraph of text. You need to read that text as clearly as you possibly can out loud. You'll have 30 seconds to prepare. So you can read it through once and then you'll have 30 seconds to do it properly when the recorder beeps. Okay. So let me disappear. You have 30 seconds to prepare to speak starting now. Five, four, three, two, one, and read properly now. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. That's the first task of PTE, and that's the first task of PTE speaking. It's a nice one to begin the test. It gets your brain warmed up. I actually gave you 35 seconds then. Sometimes it's 30 seconds, sometimes it's 35 seconds. This one was a bit longer, so I gave you 35. Right, repeat sentence. I'm going to read a sentence. You need to repeat it back to me exactly. Maybe not as you heard it, exactly as I said it. That's the difference. I'm gonna disappear. I'm gonna read the sentence in three, two, one. Educational studies is your tailored pathway to a teaching degree. Okay, you should have done it by now. There's no point sticking around on this. You repeat it as much as you can and then you click next or it just moves along automatically. Next one, describe image. You're going to see an image. It might be a graph, might be a map, might be a table of data, might be, who knows, one of those things or a picture. What you have to do is you have 25 seconds to prepare then you'll have 40 seconds to describe whatever it is in front of you. If you're an e2language.com member, you know exactly what to do. Or if you've seen the webinar on YouTube, you'll also know exactly what to do. What to do. Okay, I'm gonna disappear and give you 25 seconds to prepare, and then you'll have 40 seconds to describe it. Your 25 seconds to prepare to speak starts now. Start describing in three, two, one, and start.
Three, two, one, and stop. That's 40 seconds. Cool, well done. That's describe image. Uh, yes, these were two pie charts, but as I said, you might get a line graph or bar charts or pie charts and a bar graph or a table, etc. Let's move on. Retail lecture is the next speaking task. You're going to hear an interview or a lecture that goes for about 60 to 90 seconds. Let me give you a hint. In this one, you need to use your notebook, okay? You can't do this one without your notebook. So you'll need to take notes. You'll hear the lecture, then you'll have 10 seconds to prepare, which is basically just enough time to take a deep breath. Then you have to speak for 40 seconds and retell what you heard in your own words, okay? So let's get to it. Three, two, one. My final question is, some people will think it's a burden to give. I don't really believe it is. I've enjoyed giving all of my life since I was a graduate student. It's been something fulfilling to me. Charlie Bressler said to me that he's not an altruist. He thinks that the life he's saving is his own. And Holly Morgan told me that she used to battle depression until she got involved with effective altruism and now is one of the happiest people she knows. I think one of the reasons for this is that being an effective altruist helps to overcome what I call the Sisyphus problem. Here's Sisyphus as portrayed by Titian, condemned by the gods to push a huge boulder up to the top of the hill. Just as he gets there, the effort becomes too much. The boulder escapes, rolls all the way down the hill. He has to trudge back up, back down to push it up again. And the same thing happens again and again for all eternity. Does that remind you of a consumer lifestyle where you, you work hard to get money, you spend that money on consumer goods, which you hope you'll enjoy using, but then the money's gone, you have to work hard to get more, spend more, and to maintain the same level of happiness, it's kind of a hedonic treadmill, you never get off and you never really feel satisfied. Becoming an effective altruist gives you that meaning and fulfillment it enables you to have a solid basis for self-esteem on which you can feel your life was really worth living. You have 10 seconds to prepare starting now. Three, two, one, and start. Three, two, one, and stop. That's 40 seconds. That's how long you have to retell the lecture. Well done. Let's move on to the final speaking task of the PTE, which is answer short question. What's going to happen is you're going to hear a question. It's a test of your vocabulary. It's kind of a general knowledge test as well, which is attached to vocabulary, of course. You need to answer in just one or two words. Here we go, in three, two, one. Which is the synonym of jargon? Technical or lucid? And that's that. That's answer short question. Of course, we'll check the answers at the end. You just have to say into the microphone, which is by the way, just a headset, and the little uh, speaking microphone sits here. Pretty straightforward. Cool, well done, that's PT speaking. Now let's move on to PT writing. In this one, we're going to do both tasks. We're going to do summarize written text and write essay. I want you to do both tasks. I want you to write an essay. I'll give you the full 20 minutes. Let's have the experience of actually doing it, of putting pen to paper or fingers to keyboard, I should say. 
Cool. So the first task is summarize written text. You're going to see text in front of you, paragraphs or dot points or something like that. Quite a lot. Up to, I think it's up to 300 words. You need to summarize it into one sentence. Okay. One sentence only. That's what you need to do. You'll have 10 minutes. It's pretty straightforward. If you're an e2language.com member, you know what to do. This is a different one. Your time starts now.
All right, we're getting some answers in now. Mega, very good. Good, Shruti. That's five minutes. You still have, uh, sorry, that's six minutes. You have four minutes left. And you should use all of your 10 minutes in this task. Good, Deep Thacker, well done. Good Aravind, just remember the full stop on the end. Excellent Susanta, well done. Good, Kimbure. Tarun Deep, your sentence is not quite right. You're missing a verb. Two minutes left. Could Sam Sundu, but I'd say water resistant areas. I want to get the adjective right. Good, Amalak. Nice sentence. You just need an and before your last example there. Good Prince, just look at your verb affect there. Is it affect or affects? Same Hussein, scientist have found or scientists have found. Make sure you get your nouns right and your verbs right. 40 seconds left. Good, then Kataram, well done. That's an excellent sentence. Ten seconds. Two, one, and stop. That's ten minutes. So in summarize written text, you should use all of your ten minutes because the time does not carry over. Uh, first of all, you have to read the text. Second, write your sentence. But third, make sure that you edit your sentence. Make sure you check that, you know, is it scientist singular have or scientists plural have. Make sure your subject verb agreement is right. 
make sure your nouns are either singular or plural, uh, check your punctuation, etc. Right, let's move on to write essay. I think the essay is pretty straightforward in PT. It's an argumentative essay, so it's going to be somewhat controversial and you can either argue for or against, or you can argue for and against, but you should have a logical, consistent structure through your essay, which, by the way, if you're an e2language.com member, you will know it sentence by sentence from beginning right to end. So you'll have 20 minutes to do this. I want you to write the essay. Uh, please do it. You know what to do. I'll press start. You have 20 minutes starting now. Good, Kalani. Just check the spelling of the word internet in your first sentence. And disbenefits isn't a word. Deficits is the word you need. Good, Divya, has overtaken is the verb you need.
Mm, Sandeep, I don't know about starting with a question. Probably not. That's five minutes. So you should have written your introduction by now. You should be into your first paragraph. Not bad, Swapna needs a better structure. Good, you, Jun. It's looking good. Make sure whatever you do, you stay on topic. The computer knows if you go off topic. And in fact, content is the most important score here. It's the, you get the most points for content.
That's 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes left. You should have finished your introduction and your first paragraph by now. I'm sorry if I can't read your writing, but there's 181 people in here sending through their writing. Gerline, if you if you need help, you find this too difficult. I highly recommend the formulas and the structures that we give you at e2language.com, as well as the one-on-one -on -one feedback. Good, make sure you don't forget those full stops at the end of your sentences.
that's 15 minutes. So you have five minutes left. You should be writing your conclusion and you should definitely be reviewing your writing for spelling mistakes, punctuation errors, grammar, and also just think about the logical structure of your essay. It should flow from sentence to sentence to sentence, from introduction through the paragraphs to the conclusion. Good, Sandy. Well done. Bit of a punctuation error in that final sentence. Actually, you've got a few punctuation errors, Sandeep, with commas and full stops. Same with you, Ahmed. There should be no space after the, oh, sorry, before the comma. It should be word, comma, then space. Betty, you can do this. You just need, you just need a structure. It makes life so much easier when you have a structure for this. Good, Eugene, that's looking good. Well done. Excellent. Good, Sam. I would shorten your sentences, Sam Sandu. They're just a little bit long and not quite accurate. So I would shorten them and I would rather have accurate short sentences than inaccurate long sentences. Yes, rush me. You have to get your punctuation right. You can put a space after a comma, but not before it. Two minutes left. Good, Nishant, that's looking nice, well done. Betty, don't cry, you can do it. <laughs> Good, Tarandeep, capital letters. Good, Cumbre, that's looking okay. Remember to recap your two ideas in your conclusion. Remind the reader what you told them. Good, Siku, excellent. Just in your last sentence, it has significantly made our life better or our lives better. Think about your noun, singular or plural, one or more than one. I guess you can think about our life as one life, but it should be lives, plural. Twenty seconds.
Three, two, one, and whoa, there you go. That's 20 minutes. That's what, that's the amount of time you have to write between 200 and 300 words. You can see that it goes quite quickly. One of the biggest problems is people is, is formulating ideas. There's two things going on that you need to know for write essay. First of all, formulating ideas. You need to have a good idea of what you're about to write about before you start writing. Second thing is you need to have a structure because if you have a structure, if you have the ideas, that's fine. The language will follow the ideas, but then you need to have the structure and you need to plug the ideas into the structure and the language follows from that. So idea generation and then structure of the essay, a template in your mind, that's how you nail write essay in the PTE. Cool. Now we move on to PTE reading, which is kind of fun. Well, let's see. First one is multiple choice, choose single answer. You know exactly what to do. I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes or until people start typing in their answers. Here you go. Rakshit, you can only choose one. This is multiple choice, single answer. Interesting. We're getting a range of different answers here. Yes, you join. That's correct. It's a single answer, multiple choice, single answer. Good. Okay. Please enter your answer into the chat because you don't want to waste too much time on a single question in PT reading. You have to manage your own time in this part of the test. So there's no point sitting here for five minutes, making sure one's correct when in fact you're going to lose five complete questions at the end. Cool. How did you go? That was a tricky one, but by no means is PTE reading easy. It's definitely a challenge. We'll come to the answers at the end. This time we do multiple choice, choose multiple answers. Please keep in mind that in the actual PTE, there is no transition between, between tasks. So it moves from single answer 
to multiple answers and it doesn't tell you. So you need to know how to identify multiple choice, multiple answers in the PT, they are the square boxes. In that case, you know that you need to choose at least two. Here we go, multiple choice, choose multiple answers. Time starts now. Okay, another 30 seconds. You don't, again, you don't want to spend too much time. A couple of minutes, two and a half minutes perhaps on multiple choice, multiple answers. Cool, well done. So you should have chosen at least two. There may have been more than two. Let's move on to the next task. This is reorder paragraphs. You're going to see a bunch of jumbled up sentences. You need to put it, them into the correct order. Uh, for this one, you'll just write down A3, B4, whatever it is, okay? Here we go. A couple of minutes on this one. Vitally, we'll check the answers at the end. Good, Divya. Well done. Good, Bulami. Actually, Paul, let me check your last two, please.
Good, Imran Khan. Excellent. Okay, good. I'm getting some lots of correct answers coming through. Some not correct. That's okay. In this one, the scoring is based on how many sentences you get that align. Okay. So you might lose, you might not get two points, but you might get three out of five, for example. 30 more seconds. Again, you don't want to spend too much time on this one. Get it right and then move on. Ten seconds. You should admit you should probably spend about two minutes on this one. No more. Three, two, one, and cool. We're back. Right. Let's move on to fill in the blanks. This one's all about collocation. You know what to do. Let me disappear and away we go. Interesting. Nobody's getting the first one. I'll give you a little hint. Of course, in the PT, you don't get hints, but I'm going to give you a hint. The first one is not C. Good, Mei Yan Ong, well done. Good, Charlie. Good, Teddy Lee. Good, Rajani. Good, Tarandeep. Oh, Tarandeep, check your third one, please. Check number three. Good, all right, the answers are coming in now. Nice and steady, 30 more seconds. All right, that's probably enough time for reading, fill in the blanks. Let's move on to the second fill in the blanks task. It's reading and writing fill in the blanks. This one contributes to your writing score. I don't know how significantly. Why does it contribute to your writing score? Because it's about word choice. It's about precise, mm, how precise your vocabulary is. Okay, you're going to see a drop down list. They contain four words. They're going to be synonymous. They're going to be synonyms, but only one of them is actually going to make sense. Okay, the other ones will be kind of correct, but not quite right. And this is also something you should think about in your writing is how precise you are with your word choice because you want every single word to be precise. That's critical. Right, a couple of minutes for this one. Actually, three minutes for this one. It's a bit longer and harder.
Good, Mei Yang Ong, please check your number four. Good, Divya, well done. Nisa, check your number two. Twenty seconds. Cool. Three, two, one. Well done. That's reading and writing. Fill in the blanks. It's a tricky one. Sometimes you have to read further in the text. Sometimes you have to read before. But again, it comes down to precise word choice. Now we move across to PTE listening. The first one is summarized spoken text. You'll have 10 minutes and you should use all of this 10 minutes. If you finish early in this one, if you click next, the time does not carry over to the next tasks. So this one is separate. You have this one and then you have seven other PTE listening tasks. Use all of the time in summarized spoken text. You might get two or three of these. Then you have to move quickly through the other tasks and use your own time management. Cool, let me get my stopwatch ready. You're going to have 10 minutes, including the time that it takes to give the lecture. Here we go, three, two, one. Let me give you a hint. You will need to use your notebook. Three, two, one. Since 1901, medicine has advanced greatly. We've discovered antibiotics and vaccines to protect us from infections, many treatments for cancer, antiretrovirals for HIV, statins for heart disease, and much more. But we've made essentially no progress at all in treating Alzheimer's disease. I'm part of a team of scientists who's been working to find a cure for Alzheimer's for over a decade. So I think about this all the time. Alzheimer's now affects 40 million people worldwide, but by 2050, it will affect 150 million people, which, by the way, will include many of you. If you're hoping to live to be 85 or older, your chances of getting Alzheimer's will be almost one in two. In other words, Odds are you'll spend your golden years either suffering from Alzheimer's or helping to look after a friend or loved one with Alzheimer's. Already in the United States alone, Alzheimer's care costs $200 billion every year. One out of every five Medicare dollars gets spent on Alzheimer's. It is today the most expensive disease and costs are projected to increase fivefold by 2050 as the baby boomer generation ages. You now need to write a summary of between 50 and 70 words. For paid members who have already heard this one, it's good practice to do it again and to practice using the structure. In NISA, you cannot replay it in the actual exam. You only get to hear it once.
Mohammed, I think you'll find all of the PT lectures are authentic. And very few of them start at the beginning. You're often dropped into a lecture in the middle of it. So it's your ability to take down keywords on your PTE notebook. This is not summarized written text, so it's not a single sentence. You have to write between 50 and 70 words and you can use multiple sentences. Good, Divya, that's looking really nice. Good, Sam Sandu, just check the spelling of the word disease. Affected from this disease or affected by this disease? Check your prepositions there. Good, Sam Sandu, well done there, good one. Vishal. Good, nice compound sentence there, which could be life-threatening, well done. Check your spelling on that he talked about. And Vishal, deprive the rate at which it spreads. Five minutes left. Good, Sushanta, well done. You wanna make sure that you write between 50 and 70 words. You don't want to write fewer or more. Muhammad Ali Khan, remember this is summarize spoken text. So this is more than one sentence. In fact, it should be a paragraph of sentences. Well done, Teddy. It's an excellent final sentence. Just check your articles there, the severity. Yes, Siku, that's correct.
Two minutes left. Good, Baljit, well done. One minute left. Thirty seconds. Three, two, one, and stop. Good. That's ten minutes. Well done. That's the third real writing task. This one. Yes, it's a speaking, uh, sorry, a listening task, but it does contribute to your writing score. So it's important to get this one to do it well. It's important to do this one well and reading and writing fill in the blanks as well. Cool. Now from here on in, the paid members may have seen some of these questions in last week's webinars. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. But free users, uh, yes, if you do sign up to e2language.com, we have webinars Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for paid members only, where we do mock tests on specific skills. But nevertheless, stick around because it's good to do these twice or even three times, to be honest. Next one, multiple choice, choose multiple answers. Again, you must choose more than one. You should choose at least two. Listen carefully and answer the questions. There are remarkably smooth exponential curves that govern price performance, capacity, bandwidth. There's really a theoretical reason uh, why technology uh, develops in an exponential fashion. And a lot of people, when they think about the future, think about it linearly. They think they're going to continue uh, to develop a, a problem or, or address a problem using today's tools at today's pace of progress. And, and fail to take into consideration this exponential growth. Uh, the Genome Project was a controversial project in 1990. We uh, had our best PhD students, our most advanced equipment around the world. We got one ten thousandth of the project done. So how, how are we going to get this done in 15 years? And 10 years into the project, uh, the skeptics were still going strong, says you're two-thirds through this project, and you've managed to only uh, sequence uh, a, a very tiny percentage of the whole genome. But it's the nature of exponential growth that once it reaches the knee of the curve, it explodes. Most of the project was done in the last few years of the project. It took us 15 years to sequence HIV. We sequenced SARS in 31 days. So we, we are gaining the potential to overcome uh, these problems.
20 more seconds. Yes, Rakshit, we will go through the answers at the end. Yes, there is negative marking in this particular task, Kalani. So you need to choose carefully. You need to choose at least two. But if you choose one wrong and you get one right, you will get zero. If there are three correct answers and you get one wrong, you will get one point. Atkan, no, you can only listen to the audio once during the PT exam. Cool, that's enough time for that. You should be able to get those answers pretty quickly. It's not going to be a matter of rereading and rereading. It's not a reading uh, question, okay? You need to listen, you take your notes if you want to, match them to the answers. You should be able to do it quite quickly and then move on. In other words, don't waste time because you will lose valuable questions at the end. Cool, next one, fill in the blanks. So in this one, you have two options. You can type directly into the blanks and press tab on your keyboard, or you can use your notebook and you can scribble down the words, then go back and put them into the blanks, okay? In this case, you will have to scribble onto your notebook because you can't type into the blanks, which is a bit different than the actual exam. Let's do this one. Ready to scribble in three, two, one. In Africa, we've been doing that for years and we've been doing it on phones like this. This is a picture I took at a place called Ketengela, about an hour south of Nairobi. And the thing that's so remarkable about the payment system that's been pioneered in Africa called M-Pesa is that it works on phones like this. It works on every single phone possible because it uses SMS. You can pay bills with it, you can buy your groceries, you can pay your kids' school fees, and I'm told you can even bribe customs officials. Give you 30 seconds to check your answers. Ten seconds. Two, one, and that's enough time for that one. Cool, then you move on. And the next one is highlight correct summary. You're going to hear a lecture or an interview and you need to choose the correct summary. There'll be four. You'll notice that the answer options are quite long in this one, which gives you a bit of a hint as to what you must do. Here we go. Three, two, one. Another item that I find fascinating is the electric tea kettle, which I found out that you guys don't really, you don't do tea kettles in this country really, do you? But that's really big in the UK. 97% of households in the United Kingdom own an electric tea kettle. So they're very popular. And I mean, if I were to work with a design firm or a designer and they were designing one of these and they wanted to do it eco, they'd usually say, they'd ask me two things. They'd say, Layla, how do I make it technically efficient? Because obviously energy is a problem with this product. Or how do I make it green materials? How do I, how do I make the materials green in the manufacturing? Would, would you ask me those questions? They seem logical, right? Yeah. Well, I'd say you know, you're looking at the wrong problems because the problem is with use. It's with how people use the product. 65% of Brits admit to overfilling their kettle when they only need one cup of tea. All of this extra water that's being boiled requires energy. And it's been calculated that in one day of extra energy use from boiling kettles is enough to light all of the street lights in England for a night. Give you one minute starting now.
Interesting. Cool. Okay. Three, two, one. Very interesting. Let's move on. Multiple choice, choose single answer. You know what to do. In three, two, one, and here we go. I come from a conventional middle-class Nigerian family. My father was a professor. My mother was an administrator. And so we had, as was the norm, living domestic help who would often come from nearby rural villages. So the year I turned eight, we got a new house boy. His name was Fide. The only thing my mother told us about him was that his family was very poor. My mother sent yams and rice and our old clothes to his family. And when I didn't finish my dinner, my mother would say, finish your food. Don't you know people like Fide's family have nothing? So I felt enormous pity for Fide's family. Then one Saturday, we went to his village to visit. And his mother showed us a beautifully patterned basket made of dyed raffia that his brother had made. I was startled. It had not occurred to me that anybody in his family could actually make something. All I had heard about them was how poor they were, so that it had become impossible for me to see them as anything else but poor. Their poverty was my single story of them. 30 seconds. This is multiple choice, choose single answer, so you can only choose one. Cool. Three, two, one. Again, you should, this isn't a reading one. You should just be able to, either you're going to get it or you're not. If you're not going to get it, then you should just move on and not waste time. So you have more time for the other questions. Cool. Select missing word. This one, you're going to hear some audio and the final phrase or word or part of the sentence is going to be missing and replaced by a beep sound you know what to do. You need to select the correct ending for this audio. Three, two, one. So here's a food web or a map of feeding links between species that live in alpine lakes in the mountains of California. And this is what happens to that food web when it's stocked with non-native fish that never lived there before. All the grayed out species disappear, some are actually Cool. That one you should get almost immediately and then move on. Great. Highlight incorrect words. This one is a technological skill as well as a linguistic skill. You're going to have to click, click, click on words that are different from the audio. Okay. So it's very much a reflex in your ability to use the mouse. However, it's a listening skill because you need to dis determine the words that are different from the audio. Here we go. So you're going to hear this. What you will have to do is write down the word either that he or she says or the word that you can see that is different. In three, two, one. So what is simplicity? It's good to start with some examples. <laughs> A coffee cup, we don't think about coffee cups, but it's much more interesting than one might think. A coffee cup is a device, yes which has a container, yes, and a handle, yes. The handle enables you to hold it when the container is filled with hot liquid, yeah. Why is that important? Well, it enables you to drink coffee. Give you 30 seconds to get your words together.
10 seconds. Three, two, one, and stop. Cool, we move on to the final task of listening and the final task of the actual PTE. By this time, you will be exhausted. Trust me, you need to eat a big breakfast before you take this test. Intellectually, it is draining. Right, in this task, you're going to hear a sentence. It's very much like repeat sentence, except instead of saying the sentence, you're going to have to type it out, okay? As many words as you can remember in the correct order with the correct grammar, and you might want to think about punctuation. Here we go. Here's the sentence in three, two, one. We will help you discover your passion in a specific health profession. Good, looking good, well done. Don't forget the capital letter. Good, Maria, good, Mahesh. Good, Tara, capital letter, full stop. Good, Kalani. Well done, 10 seconds. Again, don't spend much time on it. You're going to get it or you won't. Kalani, I, I doubt whether you will ever use a comma in write from dictation. Cool. That's it, that's what the PTE is. We've just done 20 tasks, well done, and you in fact wrote an essay as well, which is particularly well done. Let's now check the answers. PTE speaking, well, for read aloud, describe image, and retell lecture, of course, I can't give you answers because I'm not a computer algorithm, I have a human brain, but here's what you need to keep in mind when you do these tasks. Three things, content, pronunciation, oral fluency, these are the three criteria against which the PTE grades you. What does content mean? Well, for read aloud, it means that you say every word correctly and you don't skip words, you don't change words, you don't delete words, fine. What's content for describe image? It means that you pick key features of that graph and you describe them. You're not describing something else, fine. What's content for retail lecture? Key words. Right, got it. Pronunciation, what does that mean? It means that you need to be easily understood by a native English speaker. If you are easily understood by a native English speaker, you will get high pronunciation scores. If a native English speaker has to strain to understand you and think, mm, did he just say that, or I can't quite understand, or it takes a little bit of effort for my brain to understand you, for example, then you may be struggling with pronunciation, Oral fluency is your ability to speak without hesitating, without pausing, your ability for words to appear in your mind and then go straight out of your mouth without searching for them and without going, um, uh, uh, it's also your ability to not restart sentences. If you start down a track in the PT, you should, should finish going down that track. Don't come back and restart your sentences. So they are three critical skills that you need for read aloud, describe image and retail lecture. What about repeat sentence? Well, here was the answer. Here is the answer. Educational studies is your tailored pathway to a teaching degree. You can see three phrases, educational studies, tailored pathway, teaching degree. Then you have to fill in the, the grammar words, okay? If you had those words in that order, with that grammar, with that punctuation, actually punctuation is unnecessary here because you're speaking, you would get full marks. Of course, you get partial credits for this. It's not yes or no. You get marks based on how many words you get in the correct order. So even if you're struggling, write as many as you possibly can. Cool, and again, you're marked on content. Well, they are the number of words you get in the correct order. 
but pronunciation and oral fluency are also important for repeat sentence. Answer short question, which is the synonym of jargon, technical or lucid? The answer is technical. These two words mean similar things. They are synonymous. Lucid is not. In fact, it's an antonym. It means the opposite thing. Cool, PT writing, summarized written text. Well, this is how you're graded on summarized written text. First of all, two points for content if you mention relevant aspects from that text. Length, if you write between five and 75 words, you will get one point. If you write fewer than five or more than 75, you will get zero points. Grammar, this is the big one. You use 100% correct grammar and you also write a single sentence. Okay, length here, it says you need to write one complete sentence, but it's also about grammar. How do you construct a sentence that is grammatically correct, captures the main idea? That's tough. Vocabulary, it's all about accurate, uh, sorry, appropriate and precise words. Write essay. This is how you're graded on write essay. You get a possible three points if you write about the question prompt and you do not deviate from the question prompt. If you write between 200 and 300 words, you'll get two points. If you use a logical structure, you'll get two points. But the structure is worth so much more than two points. The structure helps you to write this essay in the allocated 20 minutes. The structure helps you to structure your sentences and it helps your grammar. It also helps your idea generation. If you have a formula, if you have a structure, you can write these essays like that. And I strongly recommend the e2language.com one. Why? Because people get good written, not even good, high written discourse marks, which means structure on their PTE. Grammar, of course. Precision means you can express yourself precisely without having to restrict yourself. In other words, can you say in English what you can say in your first language to the same degree, with the same precision? Or in English, do you have to restrict yourself and you can't quite express yourself clearly? So that's precision, vocabulary, precise vocabulary and spelling, two points if you spell everything correctly. Cool, PT reading, multiple choice, choose single answer. The answer was A. Girls are more literate than boys, but the differences equalize in adulthood. That is the only statement out of these four that actually matches the text. The others do not, they say, something, uh, they, they simply do not match. They do not correspond. They do not say the same thing, okay? Cool, multiple choice, choose multiple answers. The answers are A, healthcare improvements in India are insufficient. The writer suggests India should increase spending on public healthcare. And India needs to increase the rate at which it is investing in order to meet its development goals. The answers for Reading multiple choice, choose multiple answers are A, C, and D. They are what the writer suggests. We'll go to Q&A at the end if you have any questions. Reorder paragraphs. Here is the correct structure. It starts with, what's the price on your integrity? Tell the truth, everybody has a tipping point. We all want to be honest, but at some point we'll lie if the benefit is great enough. Now scientists have confirmed the area of the brain in which we make that decision. They used advanced imaging techniques to study how the brain makes choices about honesty. So if you had your first one as C, your second one as B, your third one as A, your fourth one as E, and your final one as D, that is is the correct order of this particular paragraph. Cool, next one, fill in the blanks. Well, very, very few people got their bearings, found their bearings. This one required, yes, get their bearings. That was the correct word there. Whatever the orientation of their body, their brains may be smaller than the head of a pin, but ants are excellent navigators that use celestial and terrestrial cues to memorize their paths. To do so, they use several regions of the brain, brain regions, cues to memorize their paths, pinheads, and get your bearings. They are the collocations, they are the answers for fill in the blanks. Reading and writing fill in the blanks, well, these were the answers. 
It was an unknown hybrid species. It had an elusive nature. The bison ranged across the cold grasslands and they are the ancestor of the modern European bison. Hybrid, elusive, cold and ancestor are the correct answers for this one here. PT listening, summarize spoken text. Well, your mark, your grade depends on these five criteria. Content, again, mentioning relevant aspects. Two points if you write between 70, sorry, 50 and 70 words. Two points if you use correct grammar. Two points if you use appropriate, precise words. And two points if you spell everything correctly. So that's some, sorry, that should say summarize spoken text. Summarize spoken, not written. Summarize spoken text, my fault. Multiple choice, choose multiple answers. The answers were B and E, according to the speaker, the Genome Project defied its skeptics and built momentum because of technological advancements. It was not successful because of the PhD students involved. It was not unproductive and it, was, it did not become increasingly more complex. Cool, fill in the blanks. Years south of Nairobi, pioneered in Africa. You can pay bills with it and you can even bribe customs officials. Cool, so we've got a noun, we've got an adjective or a noun. We've also got a verb, we've got a plural noun, and we've got a present simple verb here, bribe. Cool, so if you had those words with the correct grammar, not year, years, you would get full marks. Highlight correct summary, the answer was B. She was talking about how electric kettles are prolific in the UK, that there are two ways to make the kettle more eco-friendly, which would be to make it more efficient and to make it from more sustainable materials. Overall though, use dictates energy consumption. This one, this one, and this one were not what she was talking about, or they may have something incorrect in them. Cool, multiple choice, choose single answer. The answer was C. The speaker suggests that her understanding of the poor was limited. Select missing word. The answer was A, he's talking about fish which are on the brink of extinction. So that was the final phrase that was missing from that piece of audio. If you got A, that's correct. Highlight incorrect words. The words were visuals, curious, allows, and liquid. I'm pretty sure the real words were examples, interesting, enables, and coffee. So if you had those words or these ones you see on the screen, that's correct, there were four of them. You just needed to click on the ones that were different. Finally, the final task, right from dictation, the answer is, we will help you discover your passion in a specific health profession. If you had all of these words in that order, with that grammar, including the right preposition in a specific health profession, including the right article, a specific health profession, including the right verb, we will help discover, etc. If you had all of these, correct punctuation, you would have got 100% for this particular task. Well done. Before I go to q and I just wanna to talk to the free users quickly about why it's a very good idea to join E2 Language because we have a pathway to success. What does that mean? Let's just say these language tests are really complicated and it's very difficult to do this on your own. It's like, hmm, if something, if you had a medical illness, would you try to fix it by yourself? I don't know. I'd probably go to the doctor. Why? Because the doctor knows what's going on. We're kind of like doctors for people who have issues with their language tests, not necessarily issues with their language, but they need to improve their grades and they need to do it quickly. This is what we do. So the first thing that happens when you sign up is you receive a link. Well, first of all, the course unlocks, so you get access to all of the materials, which is cool. But you also get a link to book a study plan, which is a one-on-one -on -one consultation with an expert like me who will sit down and talk to you about your previous test experience, what you need to do to succeed, how long you need to study for, what your weaknesses are, etc. On the website, we've got grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, skill building, fundamental skill building, and we also have a course skills YouTube channel if you wanna check that out. 
methods for each of the PTE tasks. This is critical. Tasks like retail lecture, describe image, which you've seen the, the method now, um, summarize spoken text, these all require methods. Same as the essay, you get a structure, we give you a template that you, and you get to practice. That comes next because you can't just understand the methods, you need to apply the methods. Feedback is critical. We do one-on-one -on -one live tutorials with expert teachers. We have teachers all around the world. Doesn't matter what time zone you're in. We also give written feedback on your speaking and writing. And finally, if you're a paid user, you get to come along to the live mock tests, which we have four nights of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Speaking, PT speaking, with you, when you do a full one with many different tasks, same as writing, same as reading, same as listening. That's how you achieve PT success. Cool. Let's now go to Q&A and I'll stop the recording right there.